majority of the Muslims are not aware of something called shirk. And most of the Muslims does understand that worshipping an idol or you worship other than Allah is called a shirk. Yes, it's true. But shirk has like many stages. It starts from the minor shirk and it starts from the major shirk. Now majority of the Muslims are not aware of something. When we say La ilaha illallah, we say that there is none worth of worship, worship but than Allah. And we believe the Prophet is the messenger of Allah. Now here comes the point. When we say La ilaha illallah, now the La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, the first part of the kalma we say La ilaha illallah has two meanings. In two meanings, the first of all it says, I will not worship anything else except one Allah. There is no deity worthy of worship but one Allah. Now on the other hand, it does also has a meaning that we do not care about anyone else except the commandments of Allah. And when it comes to the shirk, we do not worship an idol. Let's take an example of something on a belief. Was an Iblis a kafir or was he a mushrik? What does a kafir and the mushrik mean? Mushrik means someone who does shirk and associate persons with Allah is called mushrik. And the one who becomes a mushrik, first of all, in the, before becoming a mushrik, he has to be a kafir. The kafir is someone who denies it, the oneness of Allah who does not believe in monotheism, who does not believe in Allah, or he doesn't want to follow the commandments of Allah. He becomes a kafir. Like for, for an example, if Allah says, you have to pray five times a day. And anyone who says that, no, I, I don't care, I don't, I don't want to pray five times a day. So he is doing a kufr. He is getting into the way of the becoming a kafir, but he's doing a kufr because he's denying, he's rejecting the commandments of Allah, he is doing a kufr. And the more he goes further, he becomes totally kafir. Allah says you have to complete the five pillars of Islam. If you deny one of them, you are not a Muslim, you are a kafir. Because if you say, okay, I believe there is a God, but I don't want to pray, I don't want to do Psalm, I don't want to do Hajj, I don't want to pay a zakat, I don't want to say Shahada, but I know there is a God, but he is not a Muslim. He has to believe there is a God, and then we know that's what exactly it means. La ilaha illallah. That means it has two meanings. The one, we believe there is no God, but one Allah. The second meaning of the first part of the kalma, it means you made a promise to Allah, O oh ya Allah, I am going to fulfilling my obligations towards your commandments. This is a Muslim. So it has had two promises. So coming back to the point where it says a shirk, there's a minor shirk and there's a major shirk. What is a major shirk? Major shirk is you have an idol worshipping. You consider a grave worshipping or some buzzard pass away and you go to the grave and he is going to listen to my dua and he is going to send my dua to Allah. This is a major shirk. You go to the graves, you go to the shrine, dargahs and you consider some wali is going to send your dua to Allah and Allah is not going to listen to you. This is a shirk. Because you are not asking directly from Allah, but you are trying to make an alternate way to reach Allah. So this is a shirk. This is a major shirk. Now let's come to an another point. What is another type of shirk? Now as I started my talk, majority of the Muslims are not aware of. There is something called a hidden shirk. 
what is a hidden shirk? You know who is the worst enemy of a human being? It's not a belief. It's not his children. It's not his army. But the worst than a belief, the one who sits inside us, who hides inside us. He talked to us 24 hours. He communicates with our brain. He tells what to do. Now let's go back to the story of Abelis. Does Abelis worship some, someone else? No, because he worshiped him on his own self. He said, I am better. When Allah says, I am the creator, you are just the creation. You just do what I am telling you to do. But he said, now he feels an embarrassing. He doesn't want to obey Allah. Now he started his nonsense. He doesn't want to prostrate the angels and the Adam alayhi salam. Uh, the Adam alayhi salam. Then he starts saying, I am better. Why should I bow down or obey? I obey to Adam alayhi salam. Why? I am better. He's just a clay and I'm made of smoky fire. But this all is not that. But here is the point. What was that that made him do that? It's called self-ego, self-proudness, being of being proud. We have many people in the society. When Allah gives them the position as a president, they have an ego. They become a prime minister, they have an ego. They have a they have a doctor degree or the PhD degree, they have an ego. If they are scholar, they have an ego, like a self proudness. I am better. I am. I am giving a knowledge to the public. Look, I have millions of followers. This is called self proudness. So now you start worshiping your own self when you reach that stage. Similarly, when a believer start worshiping too much to compare to the other angel, so he felt a proudness because the other angel was considering him as to be the best one. Now inside him. There's an ego. The same things that we have inside us is the worse than the shaitan. That's called hidden shirk. What is a hidden shirk? You feel, I have an MA degree. He has a PhD degree. He is nothing. I am better. I have a PhD degree. He has an MA degree. He is nothing. I am a mufti. He is just a kari. He, just, he doesn't know anything. I am better than him. This is all self-proudness of being a shirk. Because Allah says, when I give you something, say it is because of the tawfiq of Allah and Allah knows who is better than others. If someone who is a kari, who someone is a hafiz, someone is a scholar, someone has a doctorate degree, someone has a good position in, in the society. But Allah says, it's, I gave you the tawfiq to become like that. So what do you do? You put your head down and you say, Alhamdulillah, it is you, Allah, who gave me. And rather, you consider yourself to be the same as other people. Because when you say you are better, you have more knowledge, you are kari, you are happy, you are mufti, you are scholar, you have a doctorate degree, you have a better position. That means now you start comparing yourself to other people when Allah says all the Muslims are the same. For me, the better one is, whose heart is being connected with Allah, who has a humbleness. Humbleness is number one. Regardless of what position you have in a society, if you have a millions of followers, but do not be proud, because it is Allah who gave you that. It is not you, but you rather say Alhamdulillah and put, keep yourself down. Oh ya Allah, I am nothing. It is you are the one who gave me that. Especially if you have a problem this in the society, with the rich people. They consider beggars and the poor people and the, the people working at uh, in their office or at their home, they consider them to be lower. He's my worker, he's my slave. I pay him, I pay him. But you rather, your humbleness shows your manners how you talk to them. This is the humbleness. So coming to the point, no majority of the Muslims are not aware of that. There's something called hidden shirk. What is a hidden shirk? You consider yourself to be a bearer that's self-worshipping. And the worst then, I believe, is your own nafs here. That's your worst enemy. 
what made Iblis to become an Iblis? Because he's not. He said, I am better. But rather Allah says, the one who is better is the one who has more taqwa, who has more closeness to Allah. And say, Alhamdulillah, because it is only by the tawfiq of Allah. So all my brothers and sisters who had this type of feelings inside them, put yourself down. You know, in Allah says in the Quran, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَةٍ شَرًا يَرَى On the day of judgment, Allah says, if you have a pradna, I will throw you out of the Jannah. And I will see who has the kabbar and who has a humbleness. Because the humbleness is a true slave. You regardless, you have a money, you have a big car, you have a good position, you have a knowledge, you have a computer knowledge, you have an education knowledge, you have an Islamic knowledge or any type of knowledge, put yourself down. Say, oh Yala, it is because you gave me those topics. I am nothing. It is you gave me. And majority of the people who are away from Allah, the more they have a proudness inside them. Because of the job, because of the rich money, they have a proudness in that. But rather, treat your workers and treat your employees, treat your people working for you with the good manners, with the humbleness. This is what Allah does. You know when the Prophet ﷺ said, the people who work for you are your Muslim brothers. What you wear, give them the same. What you eat, give them the same. And we have an opposite in our society, especially in the countries like India, Pakistan, I believe there are many countries. But in these two countries, there is a major problem here. In the societies, they look for something what is an old and dirty, and they think to give this as a sadhaka. This sadhaka is not accepted. The sadhaka is something, you buy something, a brand new for your workers. The people working for you, give them the brand new something. You give them something from your heart. And the majority of what people do, the rich people, they look for something in old, which is unused things. They give to their workers. This is, they consider as a sadhaka and the zakat. This is not accepted. The Prophet said, your workers, the people who work for you, are your Muslim brothers. What do you buy? Buy for them also. What do you eat? Get for them to eat something, same thing. Give them the same drink, same eating. What do you wear? Give them the same. Don't, don't find something what is dirty and you just wash it and you give to them, okay, I want to throw in the garbage, or rather I just give to my worker. This is what we would do. So everything is because of self-proudness. You feel you are better and he is just a cheap person. But maybe in the eyes of Allah, you are cheap. Maybe Allah accepted his du'as, maybe Allah accepted his ibadah. But you know, that's why Allah gave you everything in dunya. Maybe your akhirah doesn't have anything. Allah gave them nothing in dunya. But maybe in the akhirah, they have a bright, eternal life. So inshallah, all my brothers and sisters, including myself, we have to look inside our own self. Do I have a proudness? How do I talk to other people? When when the beggar asks me to give the money, how do I treat the beggar? If someone who is in need of help, do I'm showing my ego to them, my proudness to them? I have a more knowledge. I'm trying to I'm trying to get over their head. Look at yourself. Because what Allah said, it's your humbleness.